फ्रेंड्स मूविंग ऑन इन सेशन नंबर 17 ऑफ द सीरीज ऑन मिलिट्री लॉ वी वुड कवर मिलिट्री ऑफेंसेस एज द नेम इंडिकेट्स दीज आर द ऑफेंसेस व्हिच आर मिलिट्री इन नेचर हैविंग बीन कमिटेड इन अ मिलिट्री एनवायरनमेंट इट इज आल्सो टू बी अप्रिशिएटेड दैट एन ऑफेंस may come about as a result of certain commission or omission now commission can be that one has used force to a subordinate which would amount to ill treating a subordinate omission may be that omission to display requisite care which leads to a prisoner running away so an offense may be as a result of commission as well as omission offenses find place in uh, army act from section 34 to 70 uh, 34 is the start of the chapter relating to offenses and uh, this is offense in relation to the enemy and punishable with death and that should make it very clear that these are most serious military offenses which may change the course of a military operation or a battle and uh, these are included in section 34 clause a to l next section is also in relation to enemy but these do not carry death penalty they carry liability to suffer up to 14 years imprisonment and therefore they are relatively less severe so these offenses starting with 34 which was offenses in relation to the enemy and punishable with death uh, the chart here indicates the statement of offense 36 relates to offenses punishable more severely on active service than at other times uh, this clearly implies that uh, this offense can be committed in both the situations that is active service and other than an active service and if it is committed while on active service in uh, say uh, in face of the enemy then it would uh, carry liability more severe in nature than at other times 37 is mutiny 38 is <coughs> desertion and aiding desertion 39 is absence without leave 40 is striking or threatening a superior officer 41 disobedience to superior officer now difference between 40 and 41 is that in 40 a force or threat of force is used in relation to a superior whereas in 41 the superior's order is disregarded 42 is insubordination and obstruction 43 is fraudulent enrollment now what does this mean it means that a person who is not in a position who is not uh, doesn't meet the criteria to get enrollment does that and whereas in 44 the person when he is asked during the process of enrollment certain questions knowingly gives wrong answers which he knows are not true 45 is unbecoming conduct 46 is certain forms of disgraceful conduct now unbecoming conduct is uh, say for example use of unfair means during military examination somebody is caught with a matter matter written matter or the matter pertaining to examination which he is not supposed to keep in his possession or a check Uh, bounces which is known as tumor check or stealing affection of a brother officer's wife uh, moving back to the table of offenses then 47 is ill treating a subordinate intoxication can be by way of liquor or some substance or drugs 49 is permitting escape of person in custody it should uh, become clear that this charge can only be framed in relation to a person who has a person or someone under custody 
denotes irregularities in connection with arrest or confinement, uh, taking somebody in arrest uh, without authority or not having arrested somebody, not giving him a charge sheet within the stipulated time. All these will come under irregularities in connection with arrest or confinement. 51 is escape from custody, where someone has been placed under a lawful custody and he makes away from there, runs away or becomes at large, then this charge would be attracted. Then for 52 uh, denotes a number of clauses under this section, which are offenses in respect of property, starting with say committing theft, or misappropriation and likewise. 53 is extortion and corruption where it's a demand is made to collect money or gain undue favors then the charge would lie under section 53. 54 is making away with equipment then 55 is injury to property which uh, implies clearly that uh, the government property is uh, or some other official property is damaged, destroyed, etc. Then 56 is false accusation, making allegations which are defamatory in nature uh, with respect to somebody which he knows that are false or which are not true. 57 is falsifying official records and false declaration where it is duty of a person to make a declaration. He makes a statement or renders figure data, which he knows is not true and or otherwise makes a false declaration, say in making a claim to the government that he has undertaken a journey or incurred an ex expenditure, which actually he has not. Then uh, signing in blank and failure to report which uh, attracts section 58. 59 has a number of uh, different types of court martial uh, offenses which relate to court martial. Now it could be uh, behaving in a contemptuous manner in uh, the face of a court martial or not going when summoned to go for court martial or making a statement which he knows is not true uh, on oath before a court martial and such like instances would fall under section 59. Section 60 could be false evidence. Uh, it may be even uh, in a relation uh, in a matter uh, which is not a court martial where uh, an official uh, information is to be given say in uh, court of inquiry or at summary of evidence etc. Somebody who gives false evidence would uh, be liable to face a trial under section 60. 62 are the category of offenses in relation to aircrafts or flying duties. 63 is uh, uh, an offense which is uh, often invoked and it is violation of good order and discipline. For example, a few illustrations of what is prejudicial to good order and, order and military discipline. Um, to illustrate negligent maintenance of accounts, when somebody has been uh, entrusted with duty to maintain accounts and it is so uh, negligently done as a loss is occasion, then it would be an offense under section 63 or sending an anonymous letter or found in improper possession of someone else's property. There may not be clear evidence that uh, property has been uh, committed theft of by this person. But in any case, if he can't explain uh, how did he get this property, then it may be that uh, section 63 is uh, invoked for uh, being found in improper possession of someone else's uh, property. After 63, 64 has different, uh, certain different types of offenses which have all been clubbed under the head of miscellaneous offenses. 65 is an attempt to commit an offense. Uh, 
uh, which does not complete so it would be liable to be tried under attempt whereas 66 and 67 68 uh, relate to abetment now there are three offenses 66 is offenses abetment that have been committed and uh, as you know that uh, abetment can be by aid or instigation etc then in 67 is uh, those offenses which have been abetted that stand punishable with death but were not committed 66 offenses have been committed but in 67 offenses have not been committed and 68 is abetment of offenses punishable with imprisonment and not committed uh, 69 is civil offenses and 70 is civil offenses which can not be tried by court martial so there are two category of civil offenses those that can be tried by court martial and 70 is uh, those that cannot be tried by court martial uh, here uh, on the slide in front of you you find the six different statutes which amount to civil offenses and which are when required invoked by making a charge for court martial these are indian penal code or uh, the official secrets act which re relates to uh, official or classified information or uh, giving information to an unauthorized source then uh, prevention of corruption act 1988 uh, then ndps which is narcotic drug and psychotropic substances act 1985 uh, prevention of protection of women from domestic violence act this can also be invoked and uh, information technology act 2000 so these six are uh, the statutes which are the law of the land and uh, where required they can also be invoked like other offenses uh, for, uh, to a person who is subject to military law and tried under the uh, by a military tribunal mm -hmm. now when an offense is talked about there are two uh, two material um, information that have to be given one is called the statement of offense now statement of offense is uh, like say for example committing murder or committing theft or uh, ill-treating somebody now this portion in the charge sheet is states the offense as to what offense has been committed and that section under the army act or say in relation to prevention uh, prevention of corruption act that is mentioned the other aspect is which needs to be mentioned uh, is called particulars of the charge now just to illustrate if the charge was under section 34a for shamefully abandoning a post committed to his charge which it was his duty to defend now that under 34a is the material which is called statement of the offense just like i said theft murder rape decoity etc now the other other part is particulars of the charge that how theft was committed or how rape was committed so there it is written in relation to the above charge in that he at Kargil on 8th July 2021 when in charge of post Uncha Pahad in sector Draz and under attack from the enemy shamefully abandoned the above post without any attempt to resist the enemy care is to be taken that particulars of charge must support the statement of offense just to illustrate you can't say somebody has done theft and then asked how has he done in particulars you talk about outraging modesty now outraging modesty is not theft so the particulars of the charge must make out that where was the theft committed with regard to whom it was whose property what was the value etc so these are very important portions of a charge sheet which indicate statement of the offense and particulars of the charge and particulars must 
support the statement of the offense. Or another illustration uh, for uh, an offense under section 34C, the statement of offense will be in the presence of the enemy misbehaving in such a manner as to show cowardice. And then particulars of the charge will be in that he at Samha on 7th July 2021, when the enemy was attacking his post, showed cowardice by abandoning the rifle trench and hiding himself behind empty oil barrels. You would see that uh, the particulars of the charge given below duly support the statement of offense which is given earlier on the top. So this is how a charge is uh, described and uh, put in the charge sheet. Now moving uh, to section 71 which lists out various punishments that can be awarded uh, for offenses that are listed under sections 34 to 70. And uh, these punishments are starting from death, life imprisonment, then imprisonment either rigorous or simple for period not exceeding 14 years. Now you would see that uh, portion B is life imprisonment, whereas C is up to 14 years. Then officers can be cashiered. This clause is only applicable for officers. Dismissal from service. Then is a reduction to the ranks or to a lower rank. For example, a Nayak can be reduced to a Sepoy's rank or a rifleman's rank or it can be in grade. Uh, then there is four feature of seniority of rank. Uh, in the case of officers, JCOs, etc. Warrant officers, NCOs, they can be a certain portion of their service can be forfeited by way of an award and that will go towards the purpose of promotion which will get delayed or uh, um, also it would affect those whose promotion depends upon length of service which has to be uh, completed before promotion can be given so punishment can be given with regard to that also. Then for feature of service for the purpose of increased pay pension or any other prescribed purpose. So say for example three years service can be forfeited under this for the purpose of pension or gratuity and so on. Then severe reprimand or reprimand which can only be given to officers, JCOs, warrant officers and NCOs. In other words, uh, uh, riflemen or sepoys cannot be given this punishment which is there in this section 71 clause I and reprimand means warning. Uh, then for feature of pay and allowances for a period not exceeding three months for an offense committed on active service uh, it should become clear that this clause J it would only be attracted uh, during active service when the offense was committed on active service. And then for feature uh, in the case of a person sentenced to cashiering or dismissal from service of all areas of pay and allowances and other public money due to him at the time of such cashiering. So when somebody is being cashiered or dismissed, then uh, the <coughs> areas of pay and allowances can also be ordered to be forfeited. And similarly, in case uh, there is a loss or damage of government property, then stoppages of pay and allowances can be ordered till such time that loss or damage is made good. You would thus see that uh, in this way, the Army Act has designed number of offenses which have been placed in order of severity severity as regards consequences or the punishment and then section 71 lists out the punishments that can be awarded for commission of those offenses and uh, it has this uh, chapter 6 has been so designed as to be capable in this manner to enforce requisite standard of discipline amongst the rank and file 
of uh, the people in uniform thank you